that's very lovely words. Thank you. Um, I, I do have to say, I think it was um, someone said earlier, you know, it's great to have the family together. And I know sometimes um, families can mean so many different things to so many people. They can be uplifting, supportive, and then the total opposite to that. But I think it is really lovely that we all do come together. Um, we've got a united um, vision and passion. And I do apologise for those who can't see me over top of the screen. Um, but um, I just, yeah, I, I'm just so pleased to be here. So obviously, I really want to thank um, the organisers, um, being um, mental health carers, for not only bringing this day um, together, but also what I'm going to call the um, original warriors who um, really have been such stalwarts in really standing up tall, reflecting their own experiences, but also wanting no one else to experience what they have to go through. And as um, the Commission has celebrated its 10 years this year, sitting on an old psychiatric hospital site at Gladesville, which we are moving off, I will tell you, um, every day that we went to work, we understood in a very small way, in a very small way, what that history was. And I know when I talk about um, people who um, were patients, long-term patients of those psychiatric hospitals, I really do say that they were incarcerated because they had all their freedoms taken from them. They were not connected to the community. They were treated in ways where the humanity wasn't recognised every day. And I think when I give an acknowledgement um, of lived experience on a day especially like today, that's the story that we really are here. That's why we're here. To recognise that 30 years ago there are many warriors who stood up and said enough's enough. And 30 years later some of them are still in this room today, which is fabulous. But it's also about the families, the carers, people who would go visit their loved ones whenever they could, to be able to experience what the conditions that, that, that their family members or their own children were experiencing. It was not a good outcome for anyone. And I think today is a day to reflect upon that and to acknowledge the strength that we have. And so I really do acknowledge um, the original group and also acknowledge um, both mental health carers and Dean today um, for continuing that fight. So I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land upon which we're meeting today, the medical people of the Royal Nation. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging, but also to extend that to Aboriginal people here with us today. And to understand, I think, that um, our journey of trauma is shared across so many different aspects of our lives. And again, the mental health impacts, the psychological distress, but also the hope and the, the wisdom that we can learn from that. I also would like to acknowledge that really wonderful and welcome to country. Um, uh, I wish everyone has a, joke, a great um, grandma. I do could give such great wisdom there. I'm going to take notes on that. Um, but I also just wanted to recognize we do talk about lived experience and what that means for each of us. I always say that um, the Commission has lived experience at the heart of its legislation, but it's also at the heart of how we work. And I think after the Commission, so only 10 years old, we're so small compared to the, um, the CAG and um, mental health carers and being today. But it is part of our DNA. And as both um, Minister Taylor and Ryan Parker said, that lived experience is at the heart of our work, but it's the, the guiding star. And I know over the last 30 years, it's moved on so much from just being um, advice, being leadership. So I would like to acknowledge um, the Minister and her speech, um, Ryan Park and two um, other parliamentarians are here with us today. And as I said, our, um, our, our warriors, 
um, many of whom are you in this room. So for me and as Commissioner, I would not be standing here today and speaking to you if it were not for the advocacy of being a mental health carers in um, New South Wales over 10 years ago. There would have been no mental health commission without you. There would have been none of the reforms to the mental health system in New South Wales without you. So I also want to thank Perry O'Shea, Sage Green, Irene Gallagher, and now Priscilla Bryce for your leadership of OMCAG being your contrib contributions to the work of the Commission and always keeping us to account. Also, thank you to Jonathan Harm, CEO of Mental Health Carers. You've been with us for the entire journey, um, pre and during the Commission, and I'm so grateful for your wisdom and your wise advice. So 30 years ago, in 1992, consumer advisory groups were established in every state and territory in Australia as ministerial committees, representatives of consumers and carers, in response to the first National Mental Health Plan. Because of your advocacy to ensure that people with lived experience and their carers' views were heard by government, policymakers, service providers and the community, you've advocated for and helped develop the Mental Health Commission Act in New South Wales 2012 by our legislation and then of course the establishment of the Commission. This happened during Alison Ali Perkane's term as New South Wales Consumer Advisory Group Chair, who of course sadly left us in 2018. We are all grateful to her and her incredible work for people living with mental health issues and their families. I don't know whether many of you know, but the New South Wales CAG developed a Border to Border Visions of Hope report in 2012, which was delivered to the first Mental Health Commissioner of New South Wales, John Fennelly, on his first day in office. It was a vision on how people with lived experience, carers, the, and the organisations that support them wanted to see how the mental health system should be reformed. This report and submissions from Arafmi in the early days of the Commission provided foundational direction and principles for the development of the 2014 Living Well Strategic Plan for Mental Health in New South Wales 2014 to 2024. When the Commission was established in 2012, we seconded two of the New South Wales Consumer Advisory Group staff, Sage Telford, who's now Sage Green, and Susan Horsley to help set up the Commission. Sage went on to become a valued employee at the Commission for many years and acted as, CEO, as interim CEO for being in 2017. Since the Commission's establishment, being and mental health carers in New South Wales have not only provided advice, submissions, etc., to the Commission and to government. You provided leadership and hope for a better mental health system for consumers and carers. Throughout the 10 years of the Commission, we've been your funders, project partners, your collaborators, your colleagues. We've worked side by side. In our support of your work, I'd like to highlight the prominence of both organisations as the peak bodies in mental health in New South Wales. Your organisations were key stakeholders in the development in 2014 of the Living Well Strategic Plan. We were both integral into the review of the Commission by um, Dr David Chaplin in 2018, providing insights in how the Commission's work could do better to support people with lived experience and their carers. You conducted um, surveys and focus groups on our behalf. You have brought that voice of lived experience deep into the heart of the Commission. We specifically included recommendations in the more recent Living Well in Focus 2020 to 2024, so that you are now both leading and collaborating on lived experience leadership, advocacy and insights in that work which are at the heart of the reform of the whole of government strategy to improve experiences of care and outcomes. You've provided submissions, been members of our advisory councils and working groups for the Commission's projects, all to promote mental health reform and advocate for people with experience and their carers. 
for the Commission, the development of the lived experience framework was one of our key documents, our key strategies. And again, being a mental health carers were absolute key partners in that. That became such a guiding policy for New South Wales. Other jurisdictions contact us about it. It really was such a clear statement that lived experience wasn't an add-on, it was the heart of how we worked. Lived experience for me is not only at the heart, but it's also at the head of your family. And I think that over the years, these 30 years, we've seen such a transition, such a transition not only in the way that governments, both national and state, understand and embed lived experience, but also that lived experience advocacy becomes professional, that it becomes far more integrated and articulate that it's not an opt-in, it's a must. And I think that in itself is such a reforming thing, to think that every table, lived experience, if it's not there, people look and say, well, where's, where's that person? Where's that voice? It has become such an essential part of how we work. I think that, for me, is the absolute turning point. And going forward in our reforms, it is, it is nothing about us without us. But it is so much more than that, isn't it? It's about drawing on an experience, on an expertise, on a knowledge that can shape and shift how we work, shape and shift how we think about our work, but moreover, how we can shape and shift the outcomes and the lives of people. And I think advocacy in this area can never be finished. It is something that is ongoing and will always need to be there as our experiences and our understanding deepen, as we have a voice that can be the alternative to the traditional understandings. How when research is released that that lived experience voice can provide commentary, insights to understand that the research in people's lives, their own lived experience research, is equal and as valuable and needs to stand there side by side. So it is no use just having one piece of research you know, published in some wonderful um, peer-reviewed document, which is fantastic, of course, but it's not the only piece of research. It's not the only piece of evidence. And so for the Commission, I'm so very proud to work with both your organisations. Our team will always be there to support you. We cannot work without you, and we cannot work in our role as an independent agency without working with you. We may be independent in terms of our legislation, but we're not independent of you. We work with you, we work for you. And also, we are there to listen. We are there to learn, because we can never hold the knowledge that you do. So for us, it is always a growing and learning experience. And I really want to thank you I want to thank you for the past 30 years. I've been reappointed, so I'm only going to be in this role for five more years, but I look absolutely so forward to working with you for the next five years. But I know that your work will always be ongoing, because as we shape and shift this landscape of mental health reform, when finally we have services that are embedded in the community, where people can grow up without trauma in their early lives, where people can accept services without being fear of being discriminated against, without being fear of losing their human rights, when people can come together and understand that their humanity and their personhood is respected and that they lead their own recovery. That's still a journey to be taken. We'll be taking it together, and I look forward to that. Thank you.